All right, this is part two of a workshop in lobbying the UN in harmony with nature. And I want to introduce Dr. Lisinka Lefasca, who's going to share with us and give us a, a kind of a review of the last uh, workshop briefly, and then dive into um, some new, new information. It's really valuable. Thanks, Maya. Um, so first I want to stress that this lobby workshop, although we're staying in harmony with nature and everything we do is much more powerful if we do it in harmony with nature, that this workshop is not directed at all at people with projects to do with nature. This is a, you can have any, any type of project you wish. It doesn't matter. It has nothing, doesn't have to have anything to do with nature. Um, but we are using larger principles that are, that permeate every aspect of our life. And of course that's, you know, nature does too. So I can understand that uh, that might sort of come across as confusing. Um, in this workshop, I'd like to give a very quick review of, of the, the three principles we looked at in the last um, workshop. And I know that most of you will have uh, seen the tape of the first workshop. Um, and then after that, I want to just have a very quick summary from each of you about the project that you yourself want to work on today. The whole mm -hmm. workshop will be geared for each of you to work on your individual project, to work it out in detail so that you see and feel that project in such a way that you'll be more able to communicate it uh, at the United Nations in your lobby. During the first workshop, we focused on three principles, and all of them had to do with what is happening in the much larger scheme of things. Because what is happening around us today is not something that just happens to human beings. It's something that's been happening throughout the history of the universe. And putting it in that perspective helps us to see the magnitude of what we're involved with, but also to put it into perspective. Um, we could say that we're in a process of developing um, into a new unity, a global unity, as it were, in which each human being will come into their own, just like myriad other times, the cells uh, of, a, of a particular species have come into a new unity to form a new species. And this is happening with, with humanity as well. Only the global community that we are heading for has not yet come about. And that's very, very uncomfortable because as one unit or system moves into a different format, there's always a period of huge chaos that takes place. And if we look at the larger history, we see how people moved from tribes to, to states, to nations and from nations to international organizations. And we see each time in the human constellation, there was always some coordinating body, a governance structure. And in today's day, we have formed a global community which is functioning on many different levels, all the communications levels it's functioning, all the travel routes are functioning. Uh, the exchange of information uh, is, is functioning very well. But what is not functioning is that mechanism that deals with security. And the United Nations is the coordinating body of all these specialized agencies dealing with these economic and social uh, ways in which we connect. And that is focused on security. And when we look at the United Nations Charter, uh, we see that there is chapter seven in that charter, and that deals with how uh, there could be a governance structure that would enforce the agreements we made. But as stands now, the agreements are not enforced, or they cannot be really enforced. We find all sorts of mechanisms to do it, but if they're not really as well enforced as they would be if we had a proper governance structure. Which means that we're all dependent on a global community, but there's no real agreements that can really be fully enforced. And this is a terrifying place to be. It's completely our, 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 our whole um, survival depends on being part of this global community. But at the same time, um, it's sort of a free for all. 
Now, the, we, we see already that a large part of the governance structure is there in many different actors, but we are dealing within the United Nations system and with all countries and people in general. We feel this tremendous fear and chaos which is impinging on their lives. And that makes people become very rigid, um, very, um, very irrational, uh, start conflicts, etc. And this is the, the world in which we are dealing with. And where we're heading is a world which is one in which all the parts are in, in place, the structure, the unit, uh, the unity of the United Nations, which is mirrored in the unity between peoples. This is one of the things that's trying to happen. And if we can work with that process of trying that to allow that unity within the United Nations to actually to come about and to form form itself and to, for us to strengthen this, this is going to allow our, 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 the, the whole atmosphere of relaxation to take place and, uh, and, and for, for our lobby in any way to be much more successful. So what we were looking for is the unity which is going to be in the structure of the UN and our world, sort of like a, 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 a coordinating body or a head with all the cells in their right place. And we are also looking for the principle of unity. And in the first workshop, we talked about how that principle of unity plays out in every atom of our body, every molecule, in the whole systems of our body. And in the way in which our body and mind connect to the larger whole, because we are products of the evolution which has happened in the Big Bang and which has helped us to form as individual human beings. And that unity, if we can speak to that unity in another human being, and if our project speaks to that unity within the greater whole of the other projects and, and, and processes that are happening in the United Nations, then we have the universal power behind us. And even if a delegate is stuck in a position of fear because they have their country is suffering, every country, the, the, even the most powerful, like the United States and China, etc., Russia, they're all suffering inside. They all have these things that, that, that are turmoil that's happening. And even if that is going on in the delegate's mind and they're frantic to get something going, um, still, we will be speaking to the delegate at a very deep level. And so that's what we want to bring into our lobbies. So anyway, um, now let's just uh, think about how we want to go. Um, I think what I'd like to start with is, Maya, do you have something to add to that? And then perhaps we can go around and each of the people who are there can briefly say what they are going to be working on and, 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 and they're the person who's going to resist them. Okay, sure. Yeah, and um, so I'm Maya Kincaid from the Sedona International School for Animal and Nature Communication. And um, so I, I just wanna say that we also, we have all of nature behind us, whether our project is directly related to what we think is related to nature or it could seem like it isn't at all, we have the support behind us. And so um, taking moments to, to ask, you know, to, to have that support helps us remember it ourselves and give us, gives us another place to to come from you know and and then it, things can really flow with greater ease and we can also have the unity and like really connect with the delegates that we're trying to reach and to share our projects with that we may think have a totally different way of looking at something maybe even publicly speak about a different op opposite way of going about something but that we have the support behind us that we can rely on and just knowing it's there can help us to to take action and to come from a place that is more accessible for that delicate, you know, delegate to be able to um, understand what we're talking about and to actually communicate, you know, more from the heart in a way that um, that we can really share and listen to them and then listen to us. And so that's one thing I'd love to share. Yeah. Thank you, Maya. Um, I was thinking that perhaps what we could do is now each introduce ourselves, our name, 
Um, and then also just very briefly, because we're going to be working on these projects in more detail, but just very briefly, the project that you yourself um, would like to work on today in the context of the workshop. And then also, um, since our job in the United Nations is to uh, help a consensus to form, because that is the only way that works in the UN, if all the governments are behind something, only then can it really be adopted and implemented. Uh, for each of us to imagine in our minds also um, the, 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 the delet that's going to be most opposed to our project. And you can allow that person to grow in your imagination. You might not even know that they exist, but just sort of that worst uh, case scenario uh, possible, because that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with um, in the lobby. And as you listen to everybody else, uh, deeply just have a sense of, yes, um, this is something that I could lobby on or that is related to my lobby. Or um, uh, when, 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 when one of the students gives ideas, um, be ready to make notes. I have a pad here too to make notes um, of how you might apply some of the ideas that come from the others of us. All of us are students here, by the way. Uh, none of us is an expert. It's a process. So we can all learn from each other and let, let this, this, this whole uh, lobby workshop be one in which we listen to what others are saying and see how what they are dealing with and how they are saying it and what they're formulating can be used uh, for ourselves for the, those topics we want to introduce. Um, so, um, who would like to start? Uh, Yvonne, would you like to start? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I was hoping somebody else would start because I, I was, um, you know, I, being that I've become um, a group part of the Nature Stakeholders Group and um, and um, under All Wind Network as well as Common Clusters, I'm still in the growing process of figuring out how to how everything is combined, how to, how and how one would even um, choose a delegate for a mission um, and then go through that process. But to step back, um, I guess my core interests are to support the group in developing this nature stakeholders group. We're communicating the message how nature as a, as a whole is a component of the SDGs. You cannot have nature, you cannot have the SDGs without considering nature because it is an integrated part of the actual mission and I guess having the, the broader community understand the difference between nature and the SDGs because it's a concept that most don't understand and communicating it in a way uh, that they will um, that addresses their more traditional views or limited views on, on, um, on nature as a whole and um, and I um, also, I'm, I'm interested in lobbying or not necessarily lobbying to change, but to bring in the investor, um, broader investor community, because um, I'm very familiar with the broader investor community. And I know with, with funds from the outside, uh, whether it's foundations, endowments, or private equity, or venture capital, a lot of this could be ultra high net worth um, families and that a lot of um, challenges couldn't be um, cleared up and um, or supported through the UN because most people maybe they don't know and I'll summarize very quickly and I'm not answering your question maybe completely but this is a little addition um, is um, is that when I was there and they were just talking about preparing for Nairobi they were looking for funding and I for me I like to understand in America stepped in and provided funding and the UK, um, EU provided funding to help these smaller countries get access to Nairobi. Now, is this something that my community could help with? Is there some way they could come into? So for me, it's an educational process and, um, and a contribution process. So to finally summarize, nature into the SDGs, bringing a clear awareness and bringing in the business community to find ways they could add value and support and engage and, um, and learning those nuances. 
That's wonderful, Yvonne. I, I do remember you because you have already been lobbied in the UN. You're not totally a, lobby, a novice and you had some very good experiences to, to share with us. Um, you were lobbying on some uh, also financing things that you yourself were involved in uh, when you were lobbying last time at the UN as well, weren't you? Yes. I, I, of course, we lobbied. We, we spoke to many delegates. We had an incredible um, communication um, and, and rapport. And, um, and I, I, I didn't, because of where I was, I didn't, I, it was a learning, broader learning experience. I'm a business development marketing person. So I look at things in a macro sense and then get the lay of the land and then hone in. And I, I found that literally everyone in the audience, um, all the delegates were really interested in, in making a difference. Um, and, but they were trying to work within their government's um, framework. And, yeah. um, and that's what I hope a part of your group and part of learn, your, your 30 plus years or 40 of your experience with the UN uh, that I, um, I could be um, a little soldier or an advocate of, of communicating that message. Lovely, so. thank you. And if you now just had to suddenly, um, in a few words, sketch the, the most, the, the, the delegate with the greatest opposition to anything you might want to say, um, could you just sketch what they might think or what they, just very quickly. So one delegate, which was um, um, not to mention here in the thing, but it was uh, related to my country. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, what I was very surprised is when we were discussing elaborating for um, uh, the environmental courts, um, and that, that's the next conversation coming up in Nairobi, and their issue was, which was kind of odd for me, um, was that they were concerned about the rules and let it, um, agreements they had in place already and how that will impact the rules going, you know, anything that changes. So I, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I see that that was a, um, a resistance because they are not looking at the bigger picture and the end mission, they were looking at retaining their own agenda. And thus, that to me is a block. So you could say I'm interested, I'm showing up, but by saying I'm holding on to what I happened before, I mean, I want to keep everything the way it was before, even though it's bad, it's unhealthy. Um, it to me is a resistance. Or yes, consider perfect. Resistance. That's exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. Well, who would like to go next? Oh, and I wanted to say on the positive side, um, it, it, I, I spoke to a delegate from China, and to me, that was one of the first people I spoke to, and I had asked him what their mission or their interests as a country as a whole to, um, to be in this conversation. And it was fascinating because he said, we find this economically smart, um, environmentally smart, economically very and very smart. So um, they see it as a business perspective. And, yeah, uh, very good. Yeah, and, so and, and what's so good about you bringing that up is that sort of seeing the positive things also from a business perspective, you might actually, and that's what you've done in the past, build a bridge between what that person says, and you might not mention the country to the first because they might not be buddies, you don't know, um, but that you actually take that business perspective to the first who might be interested in the business perspective and then be able to take what you have and run with it. That's very clever, thank you. Um, who would like to go next? And I wanna give everybody a chance, okay? The other question is, it's just, to me, it was mind boggling that there is an opportunity to influence at that point. That, I, that to me, I think is the most interesting um, and I'm glad we're having this, um, this seminar or this conversation because one person maybe can maybe one person can influence a country you know great lovely okay. thanks <laughs> okay well who would like to go next uh, marilyn yes please okay um so the project that uh i am working on has to do with creating um uh, you're you're quite quiet is there oh. any way you know, that is a problem often with this computer and... It's better now, it's a bit better, yeah. Okay, is that better? I've, that, it's now up yes. all the way. Yeah. Um, so the, the project that I am working on um, 
with a group of people actually, is to create first a video and then also uh, some online forums with Fritz Alf Capra, who some of you may know as, as an eminent scientist today, working on environmental and global systems. Um, I first came across uh, Fritz Alf's work when I was teaching a class on global sustainability and I was using some of his theories. And then I stumbled on uh, an online course that he had just released that was dealing with the whole process of systems theory and how it could impact the global problems that we're facing today. And his um, understanding was quite, you know, brilliant in that he began to see that global problems are systems problems, systemic problems that require systemic solutions. And immediately as I was, as I was taking this course, I thought of the UN. I mean, who in the world is dealing with all of the global crises uh, that, that exist on the planet? And of course it is uh, the delegates at the UN. So I was able to make a contact with Fritz Off, and then I was also able to make a contact with the Sinka. And, um, and my goal in this project first was simply to put the two of them together so that Fritz Off's course could have a global audience that could understand that really this is a paradigm shift. Uh, and what Fritz Off is talking about is that rather than seeing the world, the globe, the planet as a, a dead, you know, a dead planet, a resource that is there for anyone to take and use and use up as they see fit, but rather to understand it as a living system that it is in fact Gaia and um, that this is a living system that has its own integrity, its own tremendously complex um, interconnections and interdependence. And it is in fact a model for all systems that we can create as humans. And that if we understand the systemic nature of the planet itself, then we have to also, we can also understand how really to solve the problems that we have created that involve climate change and you know, all the, the decline of all of the ecosystems on the planet and the oceans and, you know, including war and famine and, and all of the terrible things that we have visited upon ourselves. And if we can then look deeper, look broader, look in a different way at what the problems are, how they tend to be, we can also find solutions to those. And so his latest work is focused very much on that, on, on what are the global solutions, systemic solutions to systemic problems. So the video would be then, um, will be, it's in process, a way to speak to that, to help people understand that it is a shift of mind in order to understand what really needs to happen to correct the, the problems that we have now. Um, right. so Marilyn, I'm going to sort of, I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 I sort of lost track of time, but I was hoping that at this point we'd just keep it really brief, just a one sentence description of the problem, and then a description of the delegate who you feel, because we're going to be working at the, pro, at, at the issue a little more later. So if you could just end sort of with a, the, the picture of, of what is the ultimate delegate who, who will not want your project. Well, it was probably from the West. And maybe from the I can't hear you very well. It, might be, it would probably be a delegate from the West. Yes. Um, from a country near to my heart, um, who is focused only on business interests. and. The, uh, can you speak up? I, I, I'm not sure that I can. I think I'm, I, is that better? That's better. Yeah, that's better. Uh -huh. Yes. There's a, I think there's a volume problem with the computer. In any case, um, this would be a delegate who's focused completely on business interests, who has business interests probably internationally, his country does, 
and his focus on just exactly what Kristoff is talking about not doing, which is using up the planet, um, extracting, you know, polluting, uh, all in, in the name of progress and, um, and financial success. Great, lovely. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Thanks. <laughs> Um, Dorsey, would you say a few words about the project that you would like to work on? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, me, I have uh, an holistic program for the Sweet Navy Development Goals. Mm -hmm. So I want to send you uh, the program. Okay. Uh, and so you can lobby it uh, at the UN there and uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, together to promote uh, the the UN environment. Thank yeah. you. Yes, yeah, so wonderful. Can you have a certain approach to the goals that you want to actually introduce? Can you say it very quickly what that would be? You see, we have many pro projects. Uh, uh, for example, uh, renewable energy uh, distribution for our communities. Uh, we have also a uh, uh, a, a clean cook stove project, a modern transport to uh, for clean uh, environment. You yeah. see, uh, uh -huh, for air, uh, non air pollution. You, you see, uh, we have many, many programs, but all, all these prog projects are put in. Uh, a, a program, an annual program uh, for a sweet development goals. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I send the project, the, the program, you'll study and you see what will be good for our environment promotion. That's wonderful, yeah. Darcy, and uh, for sure. Um, it, now, when you think of introducing that at the United Nations. Yes. Who do, you think, who do you think will say, no, we don't want that? Which type of person, which type of country or, or, or uh, uh, a delegate will not agree to your program? Because it sounds incredibly interesting and very enticing, because I think many will be looking for your, your responses, but who do you think would be against it? Oh, no, for a moment, I can say this uh, government, this body can be uh, against the, the program. Uh, you know that uh, uh, the SDG, SDG program is holistic. We can do some and uh, 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 left behind others. So uh, for my NGO, we globalize everything. And uh, I want to send it to you to see what we can do together. That's great. Now, um, you say, you're talking about the LDCs. Uh, so is there an aspect of your program that um, relates specifically to the least developed countries and that an, as another country might not agree to, might say, no, we don't want to have that? It, uh, can you imagine what country that might be or what type of delegate that might be? Who would say no to your program? What would that? What sort of person would that be? What sort of um, ideas would they have that they say no to? Okay, but I want your expertise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so okay, so um, I I understand that, but that would be for the future, and we will definitely love to work with you. Um, but if you if you have your program you want to introduce it to the UN, um, is there any country that you think might not agree with it? Or do you feel that it's such a good program that everybody would agree? That's also possible. It doesn't matter if you don't see someone that um, you think everybody would agree to it because it's just a really set of really good ideas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, we're going we're gonna to go with that and we're going to work with that, a project that really sort of speaks to everyone because it's really good. Yeah. Okay, Maya, did you actually think of anything? I, I was uh, thinking myself of participating. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, what I was thinking about, there's so many great ones. That, <laughs> but um, an elephant communication project, um, we've been in my classes talking with elephants quite a bit. And just last Thursday, we had a man from um, India he was on the street and he was in our program, you know, and he's doing a lot of work with the elephants right there in the villages. So basically it's about um, being on the ground around the world, um, communicating, you know, with the animals from a distance too, but also um, being there to communicate and help the, the villagers to communicate with the elephants, to bring harmony to what's going on so that they can live together, you know, because the elephants are raiding their their fields and things and sometimes even kind of pushing on through their their homes and everything so it's something very serious and you know very difficult for the people that are living right there and from far away we can say oh why don't you just protect them but there's more to it and so figuring out ways that um, that things can happen that it can be a harmonious situation maybe an example for other species and for all of us yeah, so that's the thing as far as a person a delegate that would be against it um, probably our delegate from the United States, I would probably imagine, um, perhaps maybe some others too, but, you know, just basically saying this isn't important, you know, maybe it's not economically important or it's not a priority with other things that we have going on, you know, and that, that would be the kind of the opposition that, um, that I could imagine. Yeah, that's great. And also countries that benefit from the ivory. I know that China no longer does that, but uh, countries that ben benefit from the, the, the ivory from elephants. And uh, yeah, quite lovely. Thanks. Well, I was thinking I would deal with a topic that was introduced by several people, um, uh, namely this, and, and also people who had inscribed in this word workshop. And that has to do with the, the uh, uh, that a law needs to be passed that animals are sentient beings that animals like people feel. And um, I think I could expert, go even farther and say that, you know, plants, animals, you know, and even matter responds, has consciousness. But I want to stay with the animal sentience because there were two people who had actually um, registered for the workshop who were dealing with that issue. And it's one that I'm not familiar with, but uh, therefore it's exciting for me to work on it. I think the person who, or, or the, the, um, the country that, and I would be both a person and a country, I think, who would really oppose that would be somebody who is very much sort of um, sees nature as an object and who, um, who thinks it's hogwash and why waste our time on this and it's all uh, airy-fairy and a waste of time. And moreover, um, you know, we, we need to use our animals to eat them and for their skins and, uh, and, 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 and we need them uh, in all sorts of ways and we can't really afford to think about that they're feeling human being, uh, beings. So I think that's what I'd like to do. Now, when we go through our day-to-day -day lives, um, most of us are not aware that every cell is communicating with the universe, that all of us is in fact in constant contact with this unity that is going on around us. And that because we are part of this unity, an intrinsic part of this unity, that every aspect of is always communicating with the one is also around us within and around us. And we therefore know a great deal more, and that's how animals and we can communicate, a great deal more uh, than we're conscious of. And uh, some people, as I had never, before I started to study these things about 50 years ago, um, ever, ever even thought of uh, that, that this would be possible. And I thought it was terribly scary anyway that, you know, there could be this unity between me and anybody else. I didn't want to have anyone close anyway. Um, but anyway, 
we can actually get in touch with this unity that's going on all the time. And many of you do. The moment you're relaxed or sometimes the moment you are really in need of, of an insight, it comes. It comes as a gut level feeling. It comes to you in dreams. It comes to you in the early morning as you're waking up. You had a problem the night before and suddenly there's the answer. So that comes from can come into our consciousness and the question is can we actually use uh, is there a tool that we can use to get in touch with the unity and before i want to go into that i'd like to have maya uh, say a few words about you know how you do it because you have a very straightforward way of doing it and i want to yeah, everybody to know that that exists before i go into the tool i'm going to use which is more cumbersome maya okay yes as far as communicating with um, beings of nature um it's very similar to speaking with fellow human beings. As far as it's very direct, we can literally, like I was mentioning, talking with the elephants. Um, we were just talking in class with an elephant about um, how to manage, um, basically in Sumatra, the palm, palm oil um, trees um, and the clearing of forests and actually a mining project going in. But just talking with the elephant, like, what do you think about this? What suggestions do you have? Like, where would you suggest that we stand with, on the behalf of this project. And so basically we can ask direct questions and have direct replies. And so, but we don't need a telephone to do it. We can just speak and we could do it silently in our heads and, and have them respond right to us wherever they are in the world. And so it's something that every human being, I've, I've seen that everyone can do it. Anyone, anyone that's tried it, that I've witnessed has been successful and it's really exciting. Um, but yes, go ahead and um, please share. Yeah, I, should, I should like to attest to that because when we completed the, the negotiations for the sustainable development goals, I realized, um, as you mentioned, Yvonne, that there were going to be countries that would not see um, that we have to communicate with nature and that nature has its nature who is actually calling the shots. And I thought there has to be possible to communicate with nature. And I just got a big present because it was my birthday. And um, for that present, I, I skimmed the internet and there was nobody on it that I really liked and except for Maya. And she was so clearly, totally full of integrity and fully dedicated to this aspect. So I contacted you, Maya, and um, I asked, would you take me on for a 12 day internship? And every day we hiked into the high desert and we talked with animals and plants. And that has really been absolutely mind boggling. In those 10 days, I had homework to do every day. Maya was very strict and I was often sent into the desert by myself after she'd gone home. And, um, and, and, and what I felt, what I wrote down was for my homework was never anything that I could know in any other way. And what came to me were all sorts of insights that I, I, I really didn't know. And even insights that I totally thought, well, that's not true. That, you know, I, that's not true. I, I know better than that. And then I check it out and it was true. And so um, I just want to say that this is it. And here you have somebody who, who did it because it was necessary for the planet and for the UN. We needed to bring that perspective in, but I had, absolutely not even any hope that it was going to work so now Maya and I are firm partners and have been now since uh, 2015 May 2015 and um, because of that so but um, I want to do it in a different way now and I want you to know that what we're dealing with is not talking about nature and that nature is primary but that what we're dealing with are things and and capacities that each one of us has. And even before I even knew or was interested in nature, um, as a, I'm, a, I'm a psychologist, as a psychologist, I had begun to learn these tools and learn how to work with my mind and in an expansive way, in a way that was not normally developed at schools, but just to use the bigger capacities of the mind. And this one is very simple. As you relax, you can get in touch with this greater whole. And so I'd like us all just to, um, what I want to do in this is I want to actually work on our projects and, and create a deeper connection to our own projects and a, a deeper connection also to the delegates that we're going to talk to. 
and do that by getting in touch with that uni unity aspect in ourselves, the, the side of ourselves that sees and feels the unity. And one way we can do it is through relaxing. And one of many ways in which we can relax is by doing it using the breath. And the way we do it is we give a shortish inhalation and then we relaxed and we allow that exhalation to relax us deeper and then an inhalation and then a deeper exhalation. So if we can all just take on a comfortable position and then just inhale and then relax and exhale. And as we exhale, feel ourselves relax. <sighs> Inhale and then exhale and again relax more deeply. <sighs> and continue this for yourself, relaxing more and more deeply every time you exhale. And in this relaxed state, allow in your mind's eye a world to emerge that is the world that will be in existence when what you are lobbying for has become a reality. This is a new world, a world which has a specific aspect to it that is different because what you are lobbying for has become a reality. And just look at that world. What makes your heart sing in this world? And what feels so right about this world? What specifically feels so right? How does that affect the behavior of people towards each other? How do the changes you've made affect the society as a whole? Is there an economic aspect to the change? And how does that change our relationship to the, the environment as a whole? Feel the sense of positiveness and, and good feelings in yourself right now as you stand in this world. Feel those feelings. And now, as you look around, you see the delegate in front of you who appears in that world and is looking around and might not be completely comfortable. Look at the position of their body, the stance, the body language you feel in that person.
And now try and creep inside of their skin. Feel yourself within that body and the, and, the, and, the, and the body language it is exuding. Feel what it's like to be inside that person as they are confronting your world and are slightly uncomfortable. What is it that you're feeling as the delegate? Now you've become the delegate. What is it you're feeling? What does that person need? What do you need being inside the delegate to feel more at one, to feel more comfortable? Okay, come back. And if you would, please uh, just make some notes on what you've just experienced. And as you make the notes, make it double spaced so that as you listen to the others, you can add to those notes. Okay, who'd like to begin by sharing? Well, maybe Alyssa, you should, maybe you should start sharing because um, you have the format. Of, of <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to? Marilyn, I see you moving forward or would someone else like to? I, I will actually. Uh, and Yvonne, I, um, you and I share some um, elements in terms of what we want and who our target resistant delegate is. Excellent. Um, so, um, yeah, so you might also have some things to fill in here too, but here's what I got. So, um, so the delegate, so my delegate, I think is your delegate, <laughs> Yvonne, uh -huh. uh, is the one who um, is, you know, really operating in the old paradigm that the earth is a dead thing to be used and it's used unused up and there's no sentience anywhere except the human realm and if I'm richer than you and I'm more powerful than you then it is my purview to um, you know to take what I want so in any case I, as I felt into that person and became that person what I felt was shame and I felt embarrassment but then I also felt this resistance that um, it's like, well, you know, that's just the way it is. And, you know, you, everybody's got to just get over it because, you know, that's the way the world works. And um, so, I, and I have a sense that that's pretty, pretty true for them. So in any case, and then I, I thought about, well, what does, what would that delegate need in order to shift? What would, 
what, you know, how, how could we? And, and what I came up with was, um, or what came to me actually, was uh, they would need alternatives. You know, how could I, how could something else, if there was a different way to do it, that would take me out of this embarrassing, shameful conundrum that I find myself in, I'd support that. Yeah, let's, if there's a way that I could save face, but just shifting to something else, um, that that might be something I could support. That's what came yeah. Great. Beautiful. Very mm -hmm. insightful. Yeah. Anyone else who... Sorry, you, no, you had finished. Uh, Marilyn, what, what does the world look like? Um, the world that you were in. Oh, the, the post-change world? Yeah, the world that, that was changed. The, the, the world of your dreams, the one that turned you on, that felt so right. Well, you know, you can, I could imagine a world restored. You know, A world what? A, a world restored. You know, that the oceans were no longer being depleted. They, you know, the ecosystems were flourishing. The rivers were clean, the lakes were clean, that, you know, the way that human civilizations were, were functioning was, you know, in a, in a symbiotic relationship with nature, not uh, a destructive relationship. And, and then I thought, if we could do that, it would also impact our relationships with each other. Yeah. Because when you do one, you, you, of course, then see that respect accrues to every living being, including your neighbor. So that's what I saw. And uh, did that affect uh, things economically and socially? Uh, well, of course, because what if you, so looking at this idea of alternatives, if you can, you know, it's a completely new understanding of what what's needed and how to how to achieve that. But when you start thinking about, well, what what are the alternatives to mining? What are the alternatives to this mineral or this substance that I think I so have to have, like phosphorus, for example, phosphorus. There's this huge problem going on in Florida because it's where most of the phosphorus in the world is mined. And it's now polluting all of their water, their aquifers, their, under, you know, their rivers. And so phosphorus is the, is the reason that people need phosphorus is because they, it's part of the industrial fertilizers, the petrochemical fertilizers. So what if we don't use petrochemical fertilizers we cut down on the need for phosphorus dramatically, which means that we can, you know, we can have a whole different way. We can remediate what's, what's happened and we don't need to do it anymore because we have a, an organic, sustainable agricultural system. So those are the kinds of things that I was thinking about. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Anyone else? Is Dede still with us? Um, I don't I, see him there. I think he dropped off. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and share. Um, yes, Maya. Yeah, I noticed with um, being the delegate that I noticed uh, the delegate um, all of a sudden, like having, um, like in the heart, just feeling like a connection with what I was sharing, that this felt right. But yet, everything else the whole framework of where this person came from and what was the guidance you know like the leadership behind this person who the person was representing um it was all about something different you know so it was like two different worlds in a way and but yet the the delicate the delicate was moved by what i was sharing and that um basically so it was like but how do i the delicate had a conflict and how do i honor what I'm experiencing, what the delicate me as a delicate experiences it to be true, you know, like the truth and what feels right. 
how do I honor that when I'm driven by all this other stuff and that's who I've been and how I've been, you know, operating. Um, so a conflict there, but then ultimately, um, um, but I, I, one of the things I got for myself was to, to greet the delegate, like to be with the delegate right from the start as a friend and a colleague, you know, like not coming to the delegate as an opponent or an enemy, but to be there as colleagues um, and to be that way with everyone, that we're all colleagues in, and we're here to come up with um, a new world, like create a new world. And, um, and everyone is important in how they bring it about. So, but those are the things. And then as far as my, um, that new world, it's where all life is cherished and treasured. And so it's like everyone has respect and for each other life. And here we, and we have the elephants they're moving around in the forest, in and out of the forest, and in and out of the edges of the community, and the people are going about the business of their life, and sometimes they have little interactions, but they're harmonious, you know, and that basically there's a harmony and respect there. That's very beautiful. Thanks. That's wonderful. So you feel that the moving of the delegate comes through the, the respect and touching the heart as you talk about what you were saying. That's lovely. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, well, Yvonne, are you ready yet or do you want me to go first? Or? No, I'm ready to go. I, I think, and, I, and, you know, when we first started the conversation about this visualization, I was like, where are we going with this? And uh, but now after doing the exercise, I completely understand it was um, it was a healthy way of establishing a framework of where, where one is and how to approach the delegates. It, it was more of a, a very interesting creative um, instead of a how to, um, but more of a personalizing it, um, a goal, a vision and a goal. So. Um, so thank you very much. That was very interesting. And, um, and it's been inspiring to hear other people's perspectives. Um, so I, and, and very helpful. So as for the delegates, what I find with the delegates, um, I, I, I seeing the delegate, I feel somebody feeling trapped and, and um, a little bit um, not able to make cho choices on their own. They're just voices of, um, of someone behind them. And they are, they are, their job is on the line. And so they are limited. Um, and, and so I could see whether they, you know, so starting from the point of zero, whether they, what, what their personal interests are or not, they're starting at zero because of their responsibilities to their government or their employer. Second is that I see that um, by empowering them, by, by, agreeing to take accept information that they can make some changes and they can influence to a certain degree or at least or at least um, be, be befriended um, uh, so that's on the delegated side and um, as for the as for the environment or the the cause that I have a vision for I just see um, a cooperation with nature and human beings where we all living um, symbiotically and there's a cohabitation, a healthy cohabitation. And um, I saw, you know, anim uh, nature and animals uh, flying into people's homes and I mean, their backyards and in the streets and um, people still going about their personal daily lives and uh, really being empowered by seeing nature so close close to them on a daily um, basis. Um, and also um, strengthening communities um, and um, in large projects because there's one I'm working on. And so I was able to see that project come through. And as, um, it's a little bit harder for me to explain, um, but I do see a collaboration between humans and um, nature as a whole from this visualization and a healthier and happier environment. Great. Um, I, I was going to work with animals as sentient beings and I did. And I had some absolutely amazing insights, 
but actually I'm going to change my task now and I'm going to talk about um, cooperatives as, um, as a means of, um, as an economic means of um, creating a sustainable uh, society. And I didn't do it in my meditation, but I'm going to do a meditation for myself as I speak, which is also possible. And as I, 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 I create this world in which there are all these cooperatives and these cooperatives, they go through the whole of society. Some of them are for profit, but they're also cooperatives where people are working together in small villages. They're cooperatives where people are working together because they have a communal problem. And I'm lobbying for this format because as I see these cooperatives, I see that suddenly there is a sense of working together and working one for all and all for one inside. I'm just channeling it now myself within the cooperative, but also people belong to one or more cooperative and therefore there is that sense of one for all and all for one. And that is a very positive aspect from which to come to um, as as a human being, I've, I've uh, when when you come into an environment where you're all working together for the same goal and everybody's getting something out of it, it feels so good. It feels it makes me warm inside when I think of that, and it feels right. It feels everybody and and there isn't any competition or anything because anything everybody does is for the whole as well as for themselves. So it, me, it feels incredibly right. And then I look at society and I see that society could actually be built out of these cooperatives. We could have the cooperatives in our families. We have a cooperative here, a neighborhood watch cooperative. Um, and so many aspects of our lives could be arranged in that way in which there wouldn't be sort of one up, one down. And people would be, uh, would be drawn to it like a bee to honey because people want power and, and very often because they feel insecure. And when you feel secure in the love and caring and the appreciation of those around you, I'm channeling it now, um, you know, then that is something that is very powerful. And as an economic form, and now I'm coming from my memory, um, you know, the cooperatives are extremely successful. And they're successful even in times of uh, economic downturn. Now, in a, in, a, in a person who is from a, a, a business and, you know, a person, now let me just think, I'm, I'm a business person and, you know, all this cooperative stuff, it's important to be in charge. And, uh, you know, if I'm not in charge and I'm not going to come into my own and, uh, and I, I'm facing this world of people where they're happy. And I realize in myself, this is sort of a, goes to my heart. And I feel a little, little out of it. And I feel that I'm missing out on something. And um, so I think I can use that in the lobbying process when I talk to the delegate, that I can talk to that person, you know, as a human being. And I think one of you said that, you know, or two of you, uh, talk to them as a human being, Maya, um, you know, that really sort of arouses the feeling of equality and appreciation and caring. I think that's going to be very important. So I'm just doing that just to make sure that people realize they're coming from a social or economic project like this one, which is very basic to us as a commons cluster. Um, you know, you can you can use this whole thing, and then I come to uh, to 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 the process that if we look at that and take a few steps back, we realize that cooperatives like an ecosystem. So it's based on a very natural thing, and I don't want to harbor that whole nature thing. But I just want to say that when there is something successful, you do tend to see that there's that ramification with nature. I want to take this one step forward now. And now we're coming much more from a rational point. And I want each of you to sit down and write for yourself now where you are now, where the world is with that project, and what steps need to be taken to get to that point where you need to go. And so we can all take a few moments to describe where are we now from the perspective of your project, the world from that perspective.
And what steps do you need to take? Do we as a world need to take small steps that we need to take as a world to get to a world based on cooperatives? Or, or, or to, to, your, to your world, sorry. Well, um, I'm looking at the time and um, what I thought was that we will now put it all together. But first I'm going to tell you about what goes on in between. We now have the elements of our projects together, all of us, and we're going to communicate at each of us. But I first want to say, so what happens in the morning, I get up, I live in New, uh, in New, in, um, in, in New Jersey, um, in Rutherford, get up at 4.30 in the morning, draggled. And I think, oh my God, I got another day at the UN and I probably won't get back before 10 o'clock. I go to my, my wardrobe and I put on the clothes, as you see now, I'm wearing a suit and with the UN symbol. Um, I put on my suit, I make sure I have my business cards. And on my business cards, I have my name, my full title, and we don't need more big things. I mean, saying I'm a UN representative for this and this, uh, you know, is sufficient. But the more you can come from strength, the better. Um, the, the more people see that your background, and that is because most countries are not functional, um, don't have a functional shape like the United States or Switzerland. Most of them are complex cultures that means that they relate not just to the person and where they want to go to but they relate to the whole community and history of the person they're talking to that's very very different so 
um, a country often wants to know about your history. Who are you? What is your background, etc.? And what are your positions in society? Are you somebody that I want to be seen with? Um, I know that coming from a functional culture, we say, oh, they either like me for what I am or else I don't want to do it and I'm going to wear what I want. But no, that's not practical at the UN. You have to come forward from a position of strength and to be an asset. I have then my, my whole project. I've written up all the details that we're talking about now and it's in a report form. I've got that ready to send off electronically and I have a one page. It's an outline of what are the main points of what I'm lobbying for and why is it important to the general community, etc. and how does it work out? What are the positive things? It's a one pager. I have with me post-its so that when I listen in the conference that I sit there and when a delegate says something that relates to my project, he doesn't like it or he does or, you know, something that relates some way to it. He doesn't know what I'm going to lobby for, but I quickly make a note of that delegate in the country and I put that piece of paper onto a special file next to me on my desk. So it's ready to go. And as soon as I, the conference ends, I can run down and contact that delegate. So I have these things with me. I also have a notebook with me and cello tape so I can put in their business cards. I can take notes of what everybody said at the conference. And I go to the conference room. I have my UN badge on and I look around the room and where am I going to sit? If I'm going to give a speech, I'll sit at a mic, at the right mic. If I'm not, I will sit in a place where I can get out quickly so that at the end of the session, I can move to the, the top of the stairs and I can whiz down to the delegates and, and grab the delegate that I want to talk to. And I need to be forced because that delegate is hungry. That delegate has all sorts of problems of their countries and they need to t talk to so and to that country and that country and see if they can't get support. So I have to position, I have to be ready to go down to the, to the floor. And when I'm in my seat, I have to make sure I know where the delegates are seated that I want to talk to. So usually I slip down to the conference floor beforehand and I get myself a seating schedule. Usually they're available and sometimes they have to print them up. But I get myself a seating schedule and as I'm waiting, I look on that seating schedule and I look at who do I want to talk to? Who are the ones that are going to be most important? And in that constellation, I look first to two main groups at the UN. One of them is the G77, which has two thirds of the membership and 80% of the world. And I need to get them behind us. These are countries that are developing countries. They are often countries that have suffered from colonialism. And I need to talk to make absolutely sure that I can get them on board and to find out anybody in the G77 who would be opposed to my project. So that's the information I also need to get when I get to the floor. I also need to get the EU. The EU are wealthy countries. Many of them are colonial countries like Britain and France, who have really, um, Britain had two thirds of the world and has created enormous ravages and, um, you know, among in, in, within countries. Countries have been decapitated. They have no good governance system because the colonial powers have taken them away. Uh, so these countries, Spain, etc., Portugal, these are all colonial countries and also others. But these, these are generally also ones that have much more of a of a, a global view of the well-being of all people. They have that leisure because they have more money. And then the particular ones I want to speak to because uh, that country is going to oppose me. And as I sit there, I think of my strategy. My strategy is to make sure I get hold of that delegate who is going to be most opposed, find out what their opposition is, and then relate to them as I did in my, in my, in my visualization. And make sure that I, I, I create a friendship with that. And I, I, I must say that, you know, that we all have our favorite countries and less favorite countries. And, um, you know, I have become great friends with delegates from countries that have policies that I don't agree with generally. 
So that helps. And I find that when I, when I, I look at the people on the floor and I begin to create relationships with them, that lobbying is a creation of friendships. It's talking to somebody else as a friend, as a fellow human being who wants the same as we do at a very deep level. So I'm just giving now an outline of the nitty gritty dynamics, the types of steps I take. But now what I'd like to end with, and Marilyn, I know you have to go uh, fairly soon, and I perhaps I could let you start. I want to imagine, Marilyn, you are now at the head of the stairs, and you have already described to us the type of delegate that you need to contact. And it's the end of the conference. You've done all these things that I've just talked about. And look at you now. You look absolutely perfect. Perfect to go. Okay, now you're going to go downstairs and you're going to talk to that delegate. And how are you going to approach them? And I'm the delegate and I'm ready to go and I'm hungry and I haven't had my coffee. And my God, I have problems in my country and nobody likes my country because I'm da 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 da. And I must make sure that I do sort of get in with so and so and so and so and try and get this and this worked out. So it's the end of the conference and now I'm ready to go as a delegate. So. Would you like to come up and would you like to approach me? Okay, and I have three minutes in which to do that. <laughs> um, Indeed you do, and, th and that is exactly what happens because uh, you're gonna have half a minute in which to do it and later you can pr present the rest. So begin with the half a minute and then give us a little bit of an, an, a, a, a bigger view. Okay. Um, I, I actually can. I'm busy getting my papers together, and um... excuse me. Um, I just wanted to say I was that I had noticed your um, your your points in the last discussion, and I really uh, I, I think you and I have a lot to talk about with that. Uh, I know that you have a sense of how international uh, business goes and what's needed in order to make it successful. I also share that with you. And I have some very interesting, innovative ideas that I think could be a great benefit from a business perspective for you. I have written those in, this, uh, in the report that I have, and I'd love it if I could just give it to you to look at. Um, my name is Marilyn Fowler. I represent the Commons Cluster. And, um, and we are interested in mutual opportunities that can help all of us I think uh, as we move forward into the future and, and to create a future that we can all live in and we can all live in well. So uh, I look forward to speaking with you. I think at the next break, um, um, perhaps I could give you a few more details about the approaches that I'm working with and uh, look forward to actually having that conversation with you. Thank you. <laughs> That's lovely. And now everybody else has been watching as if you were the delegate. Is there anything that comes to mind? Oh my gosh, Marilyn, that was fantastic. I, um, I, was, I was, I'm in awe and I love the, the format that you presented it in because it wasn't, uh, it didn't, it got right to the point immediately. And, um, and you encouraged and, and, and collaborated, made that friendship while still making a point and there is a value um uh, some kind of value to the to the person you're speaking to so he wants to hear or she wants to hear and i love that you introduce yourself a little later on as who and what you were doing because um i don't know it just flowed so perfectly and then the opportunity to give him information which they would always take i'm sure because who would resist that wonderful introduction and then um and the opportunity to you opened up easily where they couldn't say no is to to follow up with them later for a little bit more information and um i'm i'm taking notes on this and i hope to reflect you yeah wow yeah. well thank you that's high praise coming from you yvonne oh, <laughs> yes. wow. I really appreciate that. yeah the two of you are sort of um soulmates when it comes to project right <laughs> we're on the same uh, yeah in the same there place so, yeah indeed well, thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Now, with that in mind, um, I 
now going to have to step out and go put a different hat on and go teach a class. Oh, so, wonderful, Marilyn. So it's wonderful. And thank you very yes, much. Thank for this. You so and it, was, much. it went very well. Um, I would have mentioned my doctorate. I would have said I'm Dr. Marilyn Fowler and I represent and because that comes from a strength. Now, there's no need to have a doctorate, but if you do have it, it's better. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, that, 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 would be, that would be an added strength. And uh, um, I think that was really excellent. And I love the way you made the connection. And I, I completely concurred with everything that Yvonne said. I kept thinking, yes, yes, yes. And mm -hmm. um, um, I think that to, 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 to say, you know, when could we meet? And really tie them down would be really good yeah. and also to state um, you know they will have to give their paper to the government and state I have a, a bigger um, a, a amount um, electronically and I would really like to look at it from the perspective of how the United States which I believe you might be talking about yeah. um, uh, how the United States can actually use that um, in, in, in you know to to strengthen at the same time uh, while finding a greater consensus with Orna. Probably you shouldn't say that. Anyway, I thought it was excellent. Thank <laughs> you so much. Well, uh, excuse yeah. me. Uh, I think that was very good, in, you know, additions too. Yeah. I think the specificity of when can we meet and um, I have more that I can, that I will send you electronically. May I have your business card so I can send it to you? Yeah. And yeah. Very good. Yeah. That. Is the, yeah, that uh, I, I'm remembering um, our, our sessions <laughs> from the past when we were actually in the room, and it does help, you know, when you when I can see the whole room and what we were doing. So, thank you for your coaching and your teaching, Lasika. <laughs> well, you're very welcome, Marilyn. I'm glad you could make it, and uh, we'll meet again very soon. I know, and I'm uh, just so delighted. And um, have a good class. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, lovely to meet you, Yvonne, and so lovely to see you, Maya. Um, yes, mwah to you. And, um, okay, and what a lovely thing to do. This was a great, um, a great way to help people prepare. So I, I honor you. I, that's a great, you've done a wonderful thing here. So, okay, so everybody, well, um, so I'll have to think about tomorrow so yeah. some some Maya are you going to send me some information about tomorrow and maybe we I, I well anyway that's a whole nother conversation but I, I might send you an email today let's think later in the afternoon California time about that so I am kind of more informed about what I might do tomorrow okay That'd be fine, man. I'll, I'll get down to that as soon as, as, as we finish. All right. So have a great so class. All right. And Thank lovely you. to have you with us. Thanks for being here. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So who would like to go next? I think I expressed myself. I think um, my approach um, will be modified to, to mirror um, Marilyn's approach and um, I think she in my mind was a great reflection and, and a great learning um, experience for me yeah and I'm sure I'll, I'll gain gain a little bit more insight between um, Maya and, uh, and yourself okay so it's up to me and Maya to start is it Maya how about you <laughs> The microphone yes okay great yeah as a delegate um, listening to Marilyn I was thinking oh gosh I can't wait to our have our meeting I want to hear what you have to share you know I, I felt curious about what she had to say and also the way that she presented herself was um, she didn't seem like an enemy or anything she seemed like a colleague and like she had it was like she came with respect and she was appreciating what you know, it was very engaging and warm and, and, and it was like, yes, you know, thank you for being here and all that you shared, you know, it was like kind of like what I heard per se. And I, I would love to talk with you about some things because I have some similar background and interest and I think that we could, you know, anyway, it was just, I was very impressed, you know, with what, what she said. And so I would also 
do something very similar. You know, just meeting the delegate, um, thanking them for what they had shared, acknowledging um, them, you know, basically not necessarily agreeing if I didn't agree because I don't want that to be with my integrity, but, uh, but basically that they're up there and they're, they're sharing and their energy and everything. And then, um, you know, arranging a time where we could talk because at the time of the conference, it's not a good time to really talk at any length. And so, um, you know, keeping it short, concise, but just making that connection that makes it so that person is curious to hear what I have to share and, you know, really wants to meet. And, and so it's not like I'm kind of like hounding them to, to say, I want to share something that they don't want to hear. It's more like, um, then they're like, oh, great. I can't wait till we have this meeting and let's do it next Thursday at 3, 3 p.m., you know, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maya, would you like to give it a, a whirl to uh, talk to either me or to Yvonne as if we were a delegate? Okay. So you're standing at the top of the, the stairs. It's lunchtime. And, um, and, and so the delegate you want to talk to is about to, about to leave. You see they're packing up their papers. Um, perhaps somebody else is walking up to them and, and trying to, to have a conversation with them. Uh, so how would you talk to them? You walk down the stairs, you walk up, and what do you do and what do you say? Okay, let's see. So I think um, I will talk with, um, well, I'll talk with you, Yvonne. Yeah, so um, let's see. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for what you've shared. You know, I was listening to what you were sharing as you were speaking, and um, a, a, some different ideas came to mind, and it really resonates a lot with the project that I'm working on that I think could actually work really well together. And so I would love to meet with you. And I know that you're on your way to get lunch and you have many things to do, so I don't want to keep you here, but um, could I give you um, this document that's a summary of the project, and I could then email you with more, more details. And, um, and how about, may I have your card so that we can arrange a, a time to talk? Very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thanks again. And, and, oh, and then I would say my name. Yeah. Good, yeah, that would be very good. And um, now, so I think you need to tie them down about when would be a good time. Okay. Yeah. That, would be, that uh -huh. would be very, and, and I love the charming way in which you approach them. Um, also, how would you um, communicate your project though? Um, you're talking to somebody who really doesn't like uh, or even care or know about elephants. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so what are you, how are you going to bring something like that? And as you're doing it, I'm realizing I'm totally at a loss as to how to bring my project. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I do on a regular basis. So I would talk to the animals and ask them, how do you suggest? You know? <laughs> so that's I, wonderful. That's that's very important. Important. It's like, okay, well, how can I approach this person? You know, what do you suggest that I say or that I do that is going to be, you know, something that will help to, you know, create a bridge or open, you know, open a door or a window, you know, or something like that. And, and so, um, cause there might be something that pops out of my mouth that doesn't even seem like it's related, but yet it is. And it's like, Oh wow, this gives me a whole different vision on what I'm up to, you know, that helps to tie things together because I think things are, we're more integrated and more, one and more connected than we realize and that when we're asking nature that's a big part of really allowing that communication you know and, and engaging in it that it gives us the opportunity to hear uh, some wisdom that's kind of bigger than what we might be thinking of you know in our our, our realm so to speak you know so that's i'm going with the, the elephants talking in my ear you know so as far as what a specific thing um the word um well Economics is coming to mind that that's something important, important connection a lot of times with the delegates. You know, how's, how are things going to impact the economics? And, and so um, my project, um, the communicating with the elephants so that we are hearing from them and living in harmony with the villagers, but how does that relate on a bigger scheme in the, the, the economics of the whole nation, you know, and of all the nations? Yeah, so those would be the, I think that's the key right there. Well, that's beautiful. Um, that's really, um, I love the way that you, you get that bigger perspective because as you were talking, I, I realized that um, 
I'm uh, also uh, dealing with a topic which at this moment I just have no idea how I present it and I, I'm thinking I should present it to a country which has a dictatorship and because uh, that's going to be just about the hardest thing to do mm -hmm. and um, but uh, at the same time you know I'm, I'm still wondering so I love the way in which you brought in the elephants and I'm, I'm also very aware that this is something that a lot of communities are dealing with it's it's not just the elephants it's sort of the raccoons um, it's it's the foxes uh -huh. it's the snakes it's uh, all sorts of animals and monkeys that are, um, are saying, well, you know, we have no more habitat. Yeah. And so we have to merge with the, with the, with the cities. And, and so it is a problem that every country is facing. Yes. And, and including the, the rich and powerful, they're also facing this. And um, so uh, th th there's that problem. And there's also the problem that you, that. Um, you know what the animals bring is absolutely essential you know the 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 fertilizing effect the the the, the insects that go along with them the um <clears throat> the, the biodiversity that sort of brings in the rains and you know the, uh, the 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 ecosystems so all these things are aspects of of the whole thing and uh, so one could approach it from any of these different aspects of of of, of what that country is actually missing Mm, yeah so that yeah, yeah yeah that's great I'm, I'm thinking aloud right now as as you know um you know after you you spoke and i i th i uh i think that that that's yeah thanks I have, that's wonderful. I have a thought for you with the dictatorship um this idea that that uh, the people that when you, you have a leader like a supreme leader and then you have these people that you know the, the population yes, um, yes. and basically if uh, there's another way to look at it that could actually be appealing to a dictator and that would be that the people are um basically they are fulfilling the dream of the dictator they are actually the like it'd be like if the dictator is painting they want to paint a picture um, but they have people that are holding the brushes and dipping into the paint and painting. They're actually doing the physical uh, things of it, you know, like even creating a building or something. But the dictators, this is the vision of the dictator. It's a dream of that person, but people are doing it. But if it's done from a standpoint where instead of it being like a dictator pointing a finger and having a harsh leadership or something, but it's done from the standpoint of my dream is your dream, but each person has their dream and what they are actually taking action on painting doing the painting like that person could be an artist and it's like oh, i love what i do and loving what they do the dictator can love that person and there can be this appreciation and respect that's there even though there's a, a leader it's like a conductor of the orchestra everyone loves the music each person is playing their individual instrument their individual part and and so they're loving what they do but when you have a, a conductor that loves the instruments loves everyone each sound loves every one of the, the people who are playing those instruments and has appreciation and gratitude it's like we couldn't do it without the violins you know or whatever it is and and something like that then that you have this harmony that's there even though so that dictator doesn't have to be threatened in losing the the throne so to speak you know um they can be there and they can be loved and revered because they are loved and revered and it can actually be something that works in a, in a different way than what we experience yeah i think that that is beautiful and it reminds me of um i was writing a book on effective global action many years ago and it was in the time when there were a lot of monolithic societies and I asked somebody who was an expert on lobbying and she did some research for me in Geneva where all the international organizations are. And she said, no country is monolithic. So a dictatorship is not just one person. That dictatorship does have discussions with parts of the population because they can't do without them. And so they, they, they have people that they're in contact with that are in contact with whole parts of the population, the teachers, for instance, the lawyers, uh, et cetera. And there, there has to be this back and forth. It can't just be in, in a vacuum. And, and you pointed to that so very well, Maya, really beautifully. 
uh, Yvonne, would you have like to have a, a specific go now? I, I can't hear you. I know, I unmuted, I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't have any specific goal. I think I'm, I'm flying under the radar of, of the, community, the community that I've joined with, um, with yourself and Rob and all the others. And, um, you know, and, and I'm still grasping the whole picture because um, being participating in the, the lobbying for um, uh, the global um, courts was uh, just another opening and I so I'm grasping the all the components and how to really impact because uh, right now I'm stepping in from um, a very new this is all very new to me and there are a lot of many many components so when you're talking about the global pack for um, environmental courts you know how does that communication translate and um, I, I'm on the same page with um, with the group uh, talking about nature and um, and I, I, I um, so I'm I'm, suffer, I'm I'm challenged here in the communication where, to answer your question. So I'm really absorbing, observing, and um, and learning from everyone at this moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of jump in there as final and just uh, sort of give it a whirl and get some feedback from you guys because, as I say, I'm, I'm not really thinking. Now, I'm dealing with, let me say, a, a document now, and this is a, the, the thing that I'm feeling, and I want to bring up the need for uh, the use of commons and cooperatives, uh, the, the format where, where people get together in small groups and undertake an undertaking together and each of them decides and gets the benefits of their decisions together. So everybody is a boss and everybody is a worker in the group and everybody benefits. And they, they are dealing with one thing. It could be with whaling or it can be de dealing with uh, uh, just neighborhood watch or it could be Wikipedia that they're making together. These are all forms of collaboration where people are functioning as a commons or as a cooperative. And I want to get that into the document. And I'm talking to somebody who is, uh, really comes from an autocratic country uh, where there is not a lot of freedom for the people. So I'm winning it now and I, I need your input. So I'm standing at the top of the stairs and I've got my business card ready. I've got my piece of paper ready. And it, uh, it talks about the part of the negotiations and the putting into it the need, uh, the, the effectivity and, and the need to, to, to honor the commons and, and the cooperatives in a country as some sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going downstairs and I, I, I move up to, and I have a, a delegate in mind um, who does come from a very autocratic country where there's absolutely no freedom. And I come up and I say, how do you do? And I hand my business card and I, I, we recognize each other. They know me and I know them. And I say, here's my business card again. I just really wanted to talk to you now because um, we're at a point in the in the document, and I, I I heard that you were really opposed to bringing up uh, any sort of community or or communal activity uh, in in the document as a means to actually achieve what we're trying to achieve internationally. And I just wanted to um, uh, here is I I have a, an outline of ways in which it might actually work out for you. Um, I was wondering if I could actually discuss that in some more detail, just very briefly. Um, in every country, of course, the people are already working in groups. And the question is that these groups are actually the, the, the basis from which um, the government actually can function. And to actually work cooperatively with these groups and to be able to be in touch with them and know what they're doing is very useful. And in a group such as the ones that we're suggesting, which are the commons for cooperatives, where everybody has a say uh, about a particular topic in a village, they're small groups, um, or where they're cooperative, um, what we find is that the cooperatives are extremely effective economically. And creating a, 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 a connection with the cooperatives, it would be a way of finding out, you know, how people are actually helping the economy to flourish and to be in touch with them. Um, 
I was wondering, I had some more ideas. We, we've worked it out as a group, um, how this can benefit a country and how it is already benefiting many countries in many ways. I was wondering, could we get together perhaps after the session this evening, just for about 15 minutes, or could we have a cup of coffee in, in, in sometime during the session? Would that be okay with you? Well, feedback guys. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, I would want to meet with you. <laughs> yeah, because it uh, also I it just occurs to me that the person is trying to figure out how to go about like how to put it all together, you know, and that you could have an idea that really helps to do that. You know, something that could be brought back. Yeah, I I don't feel I did that terribly well, but um I, I try to express the general idea that, mm -hmm. you know, finding some sort of a channel where, where the person can benefit. And particularly if that person has actually, that delegate has spoken, you can actually zero in and that helps tremendously saying, you said that and I'm most interested in that. And I was wondering, could we talk about it? I wanted to connect that to what actually we're bringing and how that might actually help that come about. Yes. So, um, you know, that would be a way of doing it. Well, I'm going to summarize now because the time is moving along and we, this is uh, turning out to be quite a long session, but I'm hoping that everything that we're saying and doing is something that will be food, of, food for thought for anybody who listens to this video as a training. Um, so what we did was we created a, a, a feeling connection to what we're trying to bring. And we also connected a feeling connection to the delegate that we want to talk. And in our imaginings, we created the most horrendous delegate. We took the worst case scenario uh, uh, with regard to our projects. And in order to try and, and understand where that person is coming from, um, as you know, we heard, for instance, that person might be coming from a place of, uh, of, 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 of being autocratic of, of etc and when you go deeply into the person you feel that there are other feelings that are there as well Marilyn mentioned sort of shame and feeling out of things and 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 that is very important to come to so that you can befriend that side and not respond to that outer side of me is important and that so to get to that inner part of the delegate so that when you actually are standing at the top of the stairs you have the whole of your project is worked out uh, this is what it's about these are the advantages uh, this is how it can be brought into practice that's all worked out electronically and you're ready to give that you have a summary of that in your hand and so when you go down and you actually talk to the delegates what you're doing is you're coming from a position of strength but not being overbearing when it comes to speaking a language for instance uh, you know some speak more than one language I usually, I was brought up in different language groups. I choose English because English is the one that I speak best in the UN context. And although I speak fluently Dutch, for instance, or, or German, I will not, I will sometimes say a few words in that and then say, do you mind if we speak in English? Because the jargon is English. And so I come from a position of strength. Sometimes a delegate will say to me, well, won't you speak French? Well, I do speak French, but not very well. And so I say, oh, no, 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 no. Because I want to come from a position of being somebody to be respected. And if I speak a language in sort of like baby way, um, that puts me down in their eyes. So I do come from a position of strength, even if it means speaking slowly. Then when I go down there, I try and find something which that delegate will um, respond to and if they've said something then that is really important to address that because then they feel heard many countries are in the UN and there's all these 193 countries and everybody's saying something and they just might fall away but to have somebody actually hear what they said is incredibly important so to start with that is really important or with something that they've brought up at another conference um, or you might go to the G77 and say well you know which are the countries that are opposed to this project and then why are they opposed to it and then when you go down talk to that person that's opposed to it but from the position that they're taking so that they feel heard 
feeling heard is really important. You need to be on an equal plane. And, and, and feeling heard is, is one way of doing it. And then to immediately jump into the things that they're really concerned with and show how you're on the same line with them and, and then sort of bring from that line, as you did in your visualization, getting from where they are inside. And if they're feeling shame, don't talk about it, but just you know address it in your mind so that you, the steps you describe is a way also for them to get out of the shame or whatever it is that's going on inside of them. So I think we've more or less uh, covered uh, everything that we wanted to cover. It's almost, uh, I think it's one hour and three quarters, which is quite long. But uh, what we're dealing with right now is trying to get in many different sides of lobbying, many different types of projects, and look at them from many different sides so that anybody who is listening to this tape can come with their own project and see bits and pieces of what has been said today and, and bring that and apply that to what they're doing. So I first of all want to thank everybody and Maya, you will end up, I know, but I just want to, before I stop, just thank everybody who was here and also those like Marilyn and Didi who are, Dudu had to leave. Um, and thank you so much for being here. And it was really a pleasure for me and also a huge learning experience for me. Maya, and now over to you. And thank you above all for making all this so uh, possible as my partner and person who thinks things through with me. Thank you. But thank over you. to you. Yeah, thank you, Lysinka. And thank you, Yvonne, uh, for your collaboration and great ideas and support. Everything great. And your wonderful presence, too. And thanks to everyone who is here and all those who will listen. And, um, and yeah, just appreciate everyone, or your passion for making a difference. And um, hope this is valuable to you for your, with your projects and inspiring as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.